1865, the Queensland Railways opened their first line from Grandchester to Ipswich. The following year, they ordered six Scottish A10 locomotives from Nielsen and Company in Glasgow. One of these, number six, was eventually sold to the Bingara Sugar Mill near Bundaberg, where it worked for 60 years and was then donated back to the QR for the railway centenary in 1965. The loco was retired in 1969 to the Railway Museum at Redbank, where it stood for 20 years, painted light blue, until in 1990 it was rescued and restored by volunteer members of the Australian Railway Historical Society. And now today, aged 126, the little loco is running again towards Ipswich, but this time on the four-track electrified main line as far as Corinda, sporting a modern Westinghouse air brake, which sometimes forgets to hold off the brakes when the loco goes too fast. The 25,000 volt overhead wires make a hum on the soundtrack that is inaudible to the naked ear. Westinghouse has finally loosened up, but can it hold off the brakes for the rest of the trip?
week later, the little loco was on its way 2,000 kilometres north to Cairns. The journey will take five days and will commemorate the construction of the cairns curanda Railway exactly 100 years ago. The A-10 is accompanied by what looks like a circus train of support vehicles, including a spare 1926 PB-15 steam locomotive, plus the last surviving C-17 loco, plus carriages, being delivered to Rockhampton on the way to run some June long weekend excursions. Every morning, three diesel-hauled Curanda tourist trains of 14 specially painted vintage carriages wind their way up the barren gorge through 15 tunnels over one of the world's most spectacular engineering achievements, carrying wide-eyed and slant-eyed tourists from Cairns to see the wonders of the rainforest. Winter in North Queensland is the dry season and a hydroelectric scheme sends most of the remaining water through pipes to an underground powerhouse. But as each tourist train approaches, the sluice gates above the falls are opened and a most amazing change takes place. Workmen at the top of the line are busy putting the finishing touches to a memorial commemorating the 24 workers who died during the construction of the track just 100 years ago. And it is to be unveiled tomorrow by the state Labor government's transport minister David Hamill, who will be travelling up from Cairns behind two steam locomotives on a special train of invited dignitaries. The copper sculpture represents a pick and a shovel and a box of dynamite. I do hope the box is empty. I drove along beside the three tourist trains on the previous day to plan my shots for this never to be repeated and magnificent event. I should have realised that on the big day the whole of Cairns would turn out and try to do the same thing.
As we approach the foot of the range, the 3 foot 6 line crosses over the 2 foot gauge cane tram system, where the diesel locos from Hamilton Sugar Mill have to fold down their cabs to fit under the QR. The road bridge leads to the underground powerhouse. The umbrella says Cairns Airport use only. After the unveiling of the cairn, the official guests proceed up to the town for lunch and miss seeing some of the most remarkable shunting on any railway anywhere. Where else in the world do they use two steam engines built 60 years apart 
to shunt flat cars with superstructures constructed entirely of palm fronds. Although the Railway Historical Society workers, who had so magnificently restored the A10, were granted only three tickets to ride on the special train, the Queensland Railway generously allowed the Society to light up the two locos every morning before dawn and to provide three unpaid workers for crowd control every day for three months and 2,000 kilometres from home in return for free accommodation in the crew's very basic quarters which were, however, ideally positioned for train watching. So on the following Tuesday, at the crack of dawn, 25 of the Society members organised their own excursion and met at Red Lynch for a private run up the range with all the photo stops they could ever want. The Curanda workers brought the logo down backwards in the dark. At this stage we have a two hour start on the first tourist train of the day, but there are so many spectacular spots to be recorded on film that we will arrive back in Curanda only minutes ahead of the regular service. It's a long, hard haul for the 126-year-old loco, and a couple of times we will run out of steam and have to wait while it builds up again. I hope we can make it to the first watering point at Stony Creek Falls.
beware of falling coconuts. station. It seems remarkable that in the 1990s it is once again possible to find three steam engines pottering around the Mossman sugar mill north of Cairns. Two Bundaberg Fowlers and a Hudsville Clark from Ingham. The two Fowlers, one of which has even been converted back from gas firing to coal burning, operate the afternoon Ballyhooley passenger excursion up the main street and out into the cane fields to the north of the town. Every morning, the Hudsville Clark arrives at the mill with a tourist excursion from Port Douglas. After turning on the triangle, it takes the five-star resort patrons back to the Radisson Royal Palms and the Marina Mirage Resort on a three-hour return trip. Each resort has its own station, but the train only stops as required.
most of the resort patrons fly in through Cairns and are taken by bus the 55 kilometres up the coast to Port Douglas, where they are then stranded without any transport. So the Mill Tramway operates a diesel hauled passenger service every two hours to bring the holiday makers in from the resorts to the Wharf shopping centre. Eighteen kilometres south of Cairns, the Mulgrave Mill at Gordonvale also operates a daily steam tourist service on their two-foot gauge system, crossing over the three-foot six gauge north coast line on a level crossing protected by derailing levers. Fired loco Nelson takes sightseers up the picturesque Mulgrave River Valley through lush rainforests and cane plantations paralleling the Gillies Highway to an orchid farm where cross pollinating is demonstrated. At the terminus, the train does a complete balloon loop, drops the tourists off and sends them back by bus. An afternoon tour arrives by bus and takes the train down the valley and back to Gordonvale. Further up the Gillies Highway onto the Atherton Tableland, we come to Ravenshoe. This used to be the far terminus of the QR line beyond Curanda that served Mariba, Atherton, Herberton and Ravenshoe. But it is now closed to through traffic beyond Atherton. The locals have restored a three foot six gauge D17 steam locomotive which used to haul passenger trains around the Brisbane suburbs until 1969 and after standing in a park in Capella in central Queensland for 20 years is now running again on the closed branch line using offcuts from the local sawmill. At 75 tonnes the loco was originally too heavy for the tracks so the rusted side tanks were removed and a trailing water tender constructed. The carriages employed are three former Sunshine Express cars which used to run from Brisbane to Cairns in the heyday of steam. The train is manned by volunteers and runs on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. But with the closure of the sawmill by the Greenies, its future is in doubt. The terminus is not, however, the highest point on the line, for the station lies in a little dip.
Nielsen and Company, Glasgow, 1865. Rebuilt by ARHS Volunteers, Maine, 1991. in Coranda now. We've got the PB15 locomotive here and the A10. Together they're going to run special steam excursions out along the line towards Mareeba out as far as Oak Forest. The A10 will run four days a week and the PB15 the other three days. And this will continue for, as they say, a hundred days because of the hundred years of steam. Railway upstream along the Barren River west of Curanda is the only level thoroughfare, so the considerable number of hippies and aborigines in the area use it as a walkway. We have emerged from the rainforest now, and at the reversing loop called Oak Forest, there are no oaks, no forest, and not much else either.
Japanese tourists are just in time to catch the last tourist train back to Cairns after a wonderfully inscrutable glimpse of steamy North Queensland. Every morning, the Daily Ravens Ho rail motor used to follow the Kuranda tourist train up the Barren Gorge over one of the world's most spectacular railways.
first Kuranda tourist train waits to take its passengers back down the gorge to Cairns before lunch. Unfortunately, by the time we get back here this afternoon, it will be dark. Meanwhile, we're heading further up the Barren River and around the back of the Atherton Table and to Mariba, where it is dry enough to grow tobacco. We're travelling with a party of Railway Historical Society members from Victoria today, so every opportunity for a photo stop is grasped with enthusiasm. At Carrington Falls, we all alight to take a snap, not realising that within 10 years, this end of the line will be closed and this spectacular spot will be no longer accessible. Because of unseasonal weather, the August Bougainvillea and the November Jacarandas are both flowering in October instead of three months apart. Both are imported from South America. 
before the road down the range to Cairns was upgraded, at no cost to the truck drivers, to provide competition for the railway, still expected to repay its original cost of construction, with interest. Our driver can remember when the seats of this rail motor would be loaded to the ceiling with parcels. Inside of Queensland's highest mountain, Mount Bartlefria, Tumulan is the highest station in Queensland. Ravenshoe is the pretty little town at the end of the line, which grew up around a sawmill, processing beautiful timber veneers from rainforest softwoods.